G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the AR-70 Assault Rifle. This is a Beretta Italian-made rifle using the 5.56s first produced in 1972. Now, I'm not going to give you a whole history run of this. There's a channel called Forgotten Weapons, which I watched a video on this before. He'll give you a little bit better rundown, so I do recommend watching that. But from watching the video, I must say that these models and textures look absolutely spot on. They've even got that little grenade launcher sleeve. Sadly, no grenade launcher functions, but it's still looks cool so you know what that's fine we'll get right into the attachments here first of all we've got the receivers as usual and instead of the powerful auto receiver which is my go-to um, damaging automatic receiver we're gonna go for a rapid auto receiver of the powerful variety so we do lose a little bit of uh, damage with that but hopefully with the higher rate of fire we can actually get out better DPS with that and there's a little there's a little bit of a mag capacity change that we can actually use to actually help that help us out with that we'll get to that soon but for now it's the barrel so we've got the long barrel and the short barrel which do nothing but change the grips the barrel doesn't actually change which is kind of weird but you can have an LMG barrel which will actually make the barrel a little bit longer but I kind of like the long barrel how it is right now because I saw it in the forgotten weapons video with that sort of handguard so that's good now we can put on a white stock a folding stock which is nice because obviously the folding stock can exist because of the recoil spring is uh, located in the front rather than the back I shouldn't be talking about this this is not really relevant to how this thing works in Fallout but still I like flaunting my newfound gun knowledge anyways so we'll put on an LMG stock because that'll actually give us the the best sort of recoil control and we're going to be firing this thing very fast so in terms of um, how this thing's gonna work we probably want to have that with the best sort of stock we can for that and there we go a drum magazine to help us um, actually get the um, bullets out there and we won't have to reload as much with a large ammo capacity obviously so we'll definitely do that and we'll go for a nice reflex sight there that's pretty cool We've got a nice tactical rail sitting on top there's a carry iron sight here which is actually pretty decent that makes it look a little bit more like an AR-15 but not really enough it doesn't really have that aesthetic and a reflex sight does fine on this thing and we're definitely gonna go for a suppressor here because there's no real drawbacks to a suppressor except for the lessened range but we get better damage out of it thanks to ace operator so that's fine and of course a legendary effect is there if we need it we will not Right, we'll create a few extra AR-70 assault rifles and we'll see how they do in Gunners Plaza. Righto, so here we are in Gunners Plaza with our AR-70 and looking down the sights, that's a nice little reflex sight, I kind of like that. As you can tell, the animations look pretty good in first person, switching over to third person, bit of hover handing going on. But we are using the um, handmade rifle animations from the Nuka World DLC, so that obviously is a requirement of this. We're also using the same sound, so there's nothing really new with the sounds or animations, but still, this thing is a new weapon, models and textures and all that, so it's still pretty good. Righto, so going over the reload animation, I left this one empty. This one's got the carry handles, so that's what it looks like aiming down those sights. As you can tell, you've got that sort of reload where you put the nose of the mag in first and then slap the back of it back in. Basically like an AK, which this thing's mag well, I think, is designed like, so that's kind of cool. It's attention to detail with these weapons that you just like, and you'd actually appreciate them more if you actually know that that's how they operate in real life. Thank you, Forgotten Weapons. Anyways, without further ado, we'll just go ahead and insta-kill all of those gunners with this thing using sneak attack criticals. As you can tell there, with the extremely high rate of fire that I do have on this thing, and being able to dish out sneak attack criticals basically constantly means I can pretty much insta-kill these gunners. Even the legendary gunners are dead within a few seconds, which is pretty crazy. We didn't have the best um, base damage on this thing. I wasn't actually expecting it to do this well, but obviously with a suppressor, you can do well with pretty much anything. Okay, not in danger just yet. On the verge of danger, so we'll just back off from that room now and attack from somewhere else, and then we'll draw the fire over in this direction. Now, with the mag of 75 here, that's almost, um, you know, up to where the assault rifle is, but we're firing so much faster, so our DPS is going to be so much higher, and we've just found some glitchy hitboxes. Don't you just love that? Thank you, Todd Howard. God damn. Okay, that was a really good angle to have on all of those gunners too, so I'm actually kind of upset that that didn't really work out. Okay, so we're not getting sneak attack criticals. We'll withdraw from this situation, and we'll attack from over here. Bit of hip fire going on. As you can tell, this thing, even when I'm holding down the trigger in hip fire mode, those crosshairs are barely even moving at all. And obviously, steady hands, I think it's called, will help us out with that. And that is very, very useful indeed. 
We'll move over to our sniper now because we can. This one's just got a um, night vision scope of the short one. That's the only scope you, you can actually equip onto this thing. So, you know, it kind of sucks that you can't put normal scopes on this thing because having night vision when you crouch is obviously going to obsolete this thing entirely. But it's nice to have a scope nonetheless. It's a nice looking texture in Model 2, so yeah, it's it's got the same sort of reflections on the scope as anything else, so it's, I think it's Sanctuary Hills that I'm seeing there, which is kind of odd. But we do um, have a relatively low rate of fire on this thing with the semi-auto receiver, so it's not actually the greatest sniper weapon, although if you can get some lucky sneak attack criticals with it, you could probably do pretty well. Now I've got myself detected because I couldn't drop the gunners quite fast enough. So we'll switch over to the loud and proud one with these carry sights here. Oh wait, never mind. We're back into caution for the moment. Mostly hidden. Righto, we'll use this to one-shot some gunners. So maybe I was wrong about this thing not being as strong as you'd think. But we are using, um, you know, fully specced out sneak attack critical. So it's going to take a little bit of um, perk sort of uh, getting into to actually make this work as you're seeing it now. That's Captain Bridget, she'll probably detect me. Yep, even with my enhanced agility with my Corsa suit, it actually gives me plus three agility, which makes me super sneaky. Um, yes, Captain Bridget has a very, very high perception. I pretty much chucked her in there to make sure I couldn't just cheese sneak attack criticals the whole way through, because yeah, it's a little bit um, unfair to the weapons that can't be um, attached to with suppressors to just, you know, wipe the floor with the ones that can be. Also, I'll have that. No damage over time for the rest of you gunners. Switch over to loud and proud one. As you can tell there, or maybe you can't tell, this thing does have the same unsuppressed noises as the handmade rifle. Basically, no recoil onto it either, so that's good. Um, if I was in power armor right now, I'd definitely eject the fusion core and kill the lot of them right here right now. But I guess we'll have to go for a little bit of some gun foo. Doesn't look like we have the highest sort of... Um, efficiency with bats here, although we'd have a, probably a little bit more if I was using a reflex sight here. Speaking of reflex sights, we ought to bring out our LMG one now, simply because we've got a whole lot more bullets loaded in that thing, and we can fire it for much longer. This is a much better weapon for this particular situation. I think I hit something with every single bullet in that mag, simply because they're all piling around like this. This is kind of ridiculous, but yes, I've got more script and spawns happening. It gives you a little bit more of an idea of what this weapon can perform like. In extreme crowd control situations, you won't be disappointed. Not that you'll ever find this many um, enemies to fire at one time due to just how the game is at vanilla, but if you happen to use more scripted spawns just like me, you could um, do all of this in just a matter of seconds, which is pretty impressive. For something that I didn't rate too highly in terms of its... Um, damage numbers initially, it's actually doing really, really well, which is a nice surprise. Where are you? Are you hiding in here? Yes, you are. No one can escape my um, abilities of wall hacks and compass omnidirectional I know where you are tactics. Righto, looks like we're right back into sneak attack critting, but now we're not, so we'll just go ahead and empty our last few bullets at her, and then we'll just hit by the rest of them. A little bit too late for Nerd Rage there, Phoebe, because we are through Gunners Plaza with more scripted spawns in a very, very quick time there. So I guess, yeah, right off the bat, this thing actually looks like a contender for a top-tier assault rifle type weapon, which is great. You kind of want your weapons to be up there, otherwise you wouldn't want to use them over vanilla ones. But yes, impressed with it so far. Pip-Boy Light Activate, that looks terrible. All right, we'll move on to the gauntlet there because I want to actually test this thing out a little bit more. Righto, we're going to run the gauntlet today. We'll go ahead and circle around three of these raiders first. So we'll use our instigating one here. We've attached some legendary effects to all of our weapons just to even the odds because we're going to be fighting a lot of um, enemies here because of more scripted spawns. Probably too much and might turn this down in the future, but we'll see. Okay, so now that we're in the camp here and without being spotted, we might as well take out you. I was hoping to get a little bit more in bats going then, but I see a frag mine at least. There we go, there's one. 
Looks like we can almost one-shot a raider like that, a raider veteran, with a nice um, headshot there with the instigating effect. It's not really enough, but we can easily follow it up with one or two shots, or we could miss all of them as they run away. This is one of the problems of having a rate of fire solo. Um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to get those shots in, and if you do miss, there's quite a long wait before uh, between shots, which kind of sucks. Right, there's Gerald over there. We've got some sneak attack crits on him, and now um, we're going to see him a little bit earlier than what I'd like to. That's okay, we've got ourselves a furious um, automatic one here, the one with the carry handle without a suppressor. So we'll go ahead and stack some good old damage on him, and then get immediately stomped. But that's okay, because we can run over here. In a nerd rage now, he's going to stop for a while, and look at that damage, that's brutal. Okay, he'll come running again, we'll reload, and kill him very, very quickly there. There you are, there's some tactical use of the uh, good old Nerd Rage perk, as well as Destroyer of Arcadia, and the Furious Effect, getting us some truly great damage there. And we've got a level up thing. I don't care, I've already got all of the perks. Righto, we might as well take all of this damage bonus from Nerd Rage and all that onto these Super Mutants there, getting thousands and thousands of damage on these guys, especially with those neat headshots. Nice. This is what I grabbed the instigating one for. Even though there's more enemies spawned, we kind of need these legendary effects to keep them nice and in control. Looks like we've got some more over there. I can target them using the um, little health bars that they have. That's kind of like wall hacks. That's interesting. It's weird because sometimes you see the blue... Um, you know, health bars, and that means they are allowed to be sneak attack critical. So maybe this is an actual way for me to see whether an enemy can be. But obviously, that one can't be. We'll just whip out our wounding um, AR once AR seventy, sorry, LMG here to finish that dude off, and then we'll go ahead and fire into these group of super mutants there. And looks like we're doing some pretty good damage. These guys are super mutant warlords. Sometimes have in excess of a thousand health, and we're cutting through them like a very sharp cutting tool, cutting something that isn't very sharp, or possibly soft. Maybe like a knife that is heated up through butter, I think that's a saying, right? Okay, we're back into Nerd Rage again, we'll whip out our sniper since we're at some sort of neat range here, and since this thing is hit scan, we'll go ahead and... Well, you didn't die. Okay, you just got ragdolled. I thought you actually died. Never mind. That's okay. We'll use the damage bonuses we can just to snipe these super mutants at range. This is kind of one of these moments where I kind of want a big old anti-material rifle because there's a lot of super mutants running at me right now and yeah, I kind of want all of the damage I can get. If I could get, you know, a good nerd, uh, not nerd rage, a good gun fu run here, I could easily kill all of them very, very quickly. Alright, they're coming a little bit closer, we might as well whip out our LMG one once more, and when it hits the fan, I guess it won't, we'll try to bring out our Furious one again as necessary. Looks like they're all gathering up, which is good, we've managed to get a couple kills there as they're sort of all forming up, which is nice, that one's legendary. Gotta kill these melee dudes first though, because they'll be the first ones to detect me. Hold on, yeah, we'll get you, you, and you. Yeah, we'll get us. We'll try to get some um, gun fuel action here. Some free crits for nothing, which is enough to get him dead. I think our last shot there was a sneak attack critical, which worked. And some. No, that was just a regular critical, but we're still doing pretty respectable damage even without the sneak attack criticals adding onto our already. Um, you know, VATS criticals that are happening. Already present VATS criticals. We'll try that out again. Okay, that one was a little less effective. Maybe we were getting some extra modifiers there, but I don't, I'm not sure. Okay, we'll try to make that one blow up. We certainly did. And we'll bring back our sniper one, quickly pop a new mag in that, and we'll get to work on these particular super mutants. He gets ragdolled due to sniper. Kill him nice and easily. That one's sitting behind a tree. We've got nice wall hacks here to finish him off before he sort of sees us. Lots of blind fire happening. Fortunately, the game uh, isn't coded for that to hit you all that regularly, especially at this range. I kind of like how the blind fire is a thing. I wish robots wouldn't do it, though, because I would think they'd be programmed to not panic and fire it where they think enemies are. 
but maybe organic beings would. Even super mutants who are supposedly super brave and strong and scary, they, they, they like to panic when they don't really know where you are. Or maybe it's just their bloodthirstiness taking over, they just want to shoot something, and that target is somewhere. Okay, still in caution, we'll whip out our LMG1 once again. Ah, looks like we've got a pair up here, we might as well just double up on the crits. Ooh, almost got him. We'll get the next one if it's a snake attack crit due to um, gun through. We get a little bit extra damage. I think that's like an extra 20% damage, which isn't a lot, but it was just enough to beat his health bar, which is nice. There's another one. Well, you get two shots. One of them will be a critical, hopefully concentrated fire. Excuse me. We'll pick up the slack and kill him. No, it didn't. That's unfortunate. That's okay, though, because we are back into regular good old sneaky combat and now we are in danger we'll take on these super mutants directly and you can see how tanky these bastards are we'll rip out our furious one there probably should have chucked a big old drum mag at this as well but maybe a furious weapon with a drum mag will just be too cheaty okay so we might have two doggos in here instead of the one well, there's a doggo. No, it's just a super mutant warlord on top of that. That's interesting. I really thought there would be more doggos. Maybe enemies don't duplicate and sort of hang out in the same area. It's actually scripted where they'd spawn. But there you go. We've run the gauntlet there with nothing but a few badass AR-70s. So I think that is a good as time as any to leave the video there. If you'd like to see this bad boy in your game, which I do highly recommend. I've had a blast with this thing, even though its animations aren't custom and technically the guns around the wrong way and some sort of things with the charging hand to where it is but you know what that's all forgivable that's fine if you're especially a big fan of italian weapons then yeah this will probably go well with your m9s i guess or beretta m that's not called an m9 that's what battlefield called it bad damien bad um yes links in the description if you want it also this companion mod if you feel like grabbing her and chucking her in your game she's got a few cool weapons for you on offer as well that's on all platforms too. This one is only on PC to my knowledge. If it's on Xbox One, links will be down there. Thank you for watching, guys. Catch ya.